Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. <laughs> yes, that's me. I'm getting all clowned up, clowned up, red nosed up. I don't know. <laughs> I looked ridiculous, but it was amusing for me. Um, so I decided to paint this clown. Well, I say decided, it was kind of decided for me as uh, the clown got possessed and attacked me while I was in bed. Um, if you haven't seen the short film, well, documentary, I should say, uh, it's uh, on my channel. <laughs> and uh, I decided to have a go at painting this. I just put it there and using a uh, scaling tool, I had it measured the head. And uh, I also put that, I think it's called a square, um, <laughs> at the top, uh, which goes in line with the paper. So then you can... Uh, create a straight edge it just gives me a bit of a grid in a way a guideline now you could have uh, drawn lines along here or you could, you could draw this in any way um, I, I'm more of a painter than a drawer so I just paint shapes <laughs> just go for the mass of the shape so I do have speed ups in this video because it took me so long and you don't want to be sitting through hours and hours and hours of me trying to work out how to paint something <laughs> uh, it's funny isn't it I don't know why painting never gets easy it never gets easy I'm always um, battling through So I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, so I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do the audio for this. And uh, I've actually got a red nose normally, so I didn't really need to wear a red nose today. <laughs> I think it's changing temperatures. Makes me a little bit cold. Give me a bit of a blocked nose. But for I'll battle on, I'll try and make a... Uh, the audio for this video <laughs> as I paint the hand. So I'm using some uh, card, artist card that I bought from the art shop. I'm using acrylic paints. Yep, acrylic paints. Now I don't use acrylic paints that often, but I use gouache quite a lot, especially when I'm out and about and uh, just sketching. <laughs> Whenever I want to sketch, I tend to get the gouache out. And, uh, and I could have painted this in gouache, but I really felt like acrylics for this painting would work the best, because with acrylics, when they dry, they... Uh, they dry solid and you don't have the worry of lifting paint um, especially on painting on card it dries quite fast <laughs> so um, I constantly measure 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 <laughs> checking 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 looking and uh, it, it's a real challenge it really is a it is for me anyway some people can just paint something straight up <laughs> and they have no worries for me it's a it's a real uh, a grueling process but enjoyable I do enjoy it I really enjoyed painting this and I, I really like the, the finished painting so I measured the arm there So I'm using quite a uh, watery acrylic to start with because th the way I was thinking was uh, if I start quite thin first then I can always charge my colours afterwards. 
it's a similar uh, way that I think with oil painting. When I'm oil painting, I paint really thin, but what I'm thinking is I can change it afterwards. <laughs> it's a totally different thought process, really, but it, it, kind of similar. It's funny, really, because a, a lot of paintings that I do, I do everything different. Like some paintings, I'll just slot paint on straight away, and some I'll gradually build up. And <laughs> it used to be a minefield for me when I was first learning, and I would see artists, and they would do a painting a certain way, and then I'd watch them paint something else. And they'd paint it differently. And I was like, what are they doing? How can they not be using the same process they did before? So it's uh, sped up a little bit. It's just me charging in. <laughs> du -du 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 charging in. <laughs> charging in with some more black. Uh, that's all. So I, what I tend to do, and uh, I think this is from using watercolours a lot, is uh, I, I tend to make black with brown and blue but then I'll also put black in it <laughs> so I'll make my uh, dark with uh, burnt umber and ultramarine blue but then I'll throw in ivory black as well sometimes I'll just use the ivory black and throw a bit of blue in it to cool it down I love ivory black it's such a, such a good colour I know uh, some people say black's not a colour <laughs> And they're probably right, but you know that makes things a bit too complicated for me. <laughs> I like things to be simple. I try to simplify everything, and I mean everything, to the simplest thought, and then I can understand it better. I don't think there is such a thing as complexities. I think they're only complex. A complexity is only complex when it is complex. But when it's understood, it's simple. Therefore, it's simplified. So there's no such thing as a complexity if it's simplified. <laughs> Welcome to the mind of Jason Bowen. I'm going to try to hold back any sneezes. I don't want you to get ill watching this. <laughs> so one of the big challenges for this is the way I set it up. I'm on the floor. That's uh, the pattern of the rug that you can see on the left. And this rug I bought while I was uh, around my nans. The next door neighbour was vlogging all their stuff because they were moving. And I bought this big rug for a fiver it was the best bargain I've ever had and it's still there and it's really good and uh, yeah just measuring the shirt the distance there a lot of measuring so my off-white as you notice on the plate because I'm using a normal dinner plate we don't have meals on plates, we use them as pallets. <laughs> and uh, it's good to use a plate because a lot of the old masters, and I always, <laughs> I always research the old masters, I can't help it. I'm constantly look, reading books actually on uh, Turner and Constable. I've got two books on the go on Turner and Constable. But they used, they didn't use plastic pallets. There was no plastic pallets. They used ceramic pallets, or wooden pallets, no plastic. And uh, the great thing about ceramics is that, you know, it's good for the environment. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's actually true. It's got to be better than plastics, though. But then again, I have got a plastic pallet. I use when I go out watercolouring, so... Hmm. The 
good thing about ceramics though, you've probably got one. You've probably got one. You can just open the cupboard, pull your plate out, and away you go. So it's just sped up a bit. So I'm using my off off white, more of a grey, and because uh, I'm using a greyish blue paper, uh, that does does make your colour mixing a little different to where if you was painting on pure white, because the grey is showing through a little bit. So you mix in with the help of the paper. Now I've been thinking about the use of different grounds and I keep thinking to myself that if you was painting faces on a canvas you're best off using white because then the pure white this is uh, oil painting I'm thinking because what I'm thinking is that the pure white will push through the paint if you paint thinly Yeah, I'm still thinking about that. Because <laughs> if you painted opaquely, it wouldn't matter what colour your ground is. I need to have a go at it. I need to have a go at doing a transparent face. I think it'd be interesting. I really like this yellow shirt. I just darkened my colour there with a bit of um, burnt sienna. You can use a bit of the... <laughs> it's amazing actually. You could chuck whatever you want in the yellow and see, just see what happens. When you're painting, experiment. Do things like that. Don't follow uh, manuals or books on how to colour mix. You want All you want to do is get your colours out and just experiment by painting something. So by painting this, I can experiment with my colour mixing. So much better than painting squares. It almost uh, depresses me. <laughs> the idea of painting squares. Because I have painted squares, and I looked at the squares, and I thought, Huh. Well, I don't feel like I'm any better. <laughs> Suppose I'm a bit better at painting a square, but I don't feel like I'm a better colorist. Yeah, I don't didn't feel like anything seeped into my brain when I did that. It might be just me. But I I would suggest if you're a beginner painter, avoid the squares and just paint stuff. Because if you think of it, if you paint things, not only are you going to get better at painting things, <laughs> you're going to get better at colour mixing as well. So it's a, a double, a double hit. So uh, the other <laughs> problem I was having, because of the angle I was looking at the puppet, I was um, getting a different angle to what you're seeing on camera. So th there is some things that get changed. And uh, I'm starting to think maybe the best way for me to film this sort of thing is to have a camera strapped to my head. <laughs> And then I can get right over the top and look down while I'm painting. Because I do do that sometimes. But I kept thinking, oh no, 
I'm blocking the uh, the image. Or maybe I should have a uh, a desk that goes at an angle. I think about it. Because I didn't enjoy this. I do enjoy painting in acrylics. I just enjoy painting. <laughs> I like painting on the computer as well. I do find that no offence to digital artists, but I do find it a bit too easy to paint on the computer. Especially, well, copying pictures, of course. Um, I don't know. It feels like the challenge is not there when I'm on the computer. But when I'm painting like this, painting, painting, the challenge is there and it's really tough. just my thought though because you do learn a lot by painting on the computer though because I've learned a lot from doing it so who knows <laughs> so I'm just throwing in the black again blocking in if you want to have a go at something like this then uh, you could always freeze frame the image print it out and have a go at painting it or if you've got a toy lying around lie it down on a piece of card and try and copy it well you could do anything like this really you could try and copy anything It's good. Uh, it's good fun if you've got it next to you like that, though, because then you can look back and forth, and it, it, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a real challenge. Really enjoyable, though. Enjoyable challenge. Yeah. So I had music on, and I had uh, an audio book on. I even had a film on for a bit because sometimes you know you get your favorite films that you, that you just think are oh, brilliant and uh, you like listening to the actors what they say and things uh, I put those sort of films on where, where they got really good uh, scripts so I can listen <laughs> while I'm painting I like listening to audio books as well Tell you, there's a good um, podcast called Three Point Perspective. It's on uh, uh, the SVS Learn page. It's a uh, free free artist talking about uh, their illustration work and and things. It's it's pretty good. I'd recommend it. I listen to that quite a lot actually. That podcast. I like listening to uh, Bobby Chu as well on his uh, schoolism. He does like little podcasts and things. <laughs> Talks to artists. I, I like that. It's good to listen to stuff like that when you're painting because then it makes you feel like you're involved even if you're not. Even if you're like me and you live out in the sticks and there's no really... There's no studios and stuff around. But it, it when you listen to them it makes you feel like you involved. <laughs> you can pretend anyway. So I'm just darkening up the uh the shoe there. I'm just looking, looking at the dark blocking in trying to get shapes I was I was considering to just 
leave the lights and just put in the blacks and then I would sort of think oh, no maybe I should just fill it in black and then put the highlights afterwards because <laughs> I was I was sort of thinking in watercolor terms even though I'm using acrylics and you forget that acrylics they're just different <laughs> I should do a uh, painting where you paint the same thing in acrylics one side and then watercolour and gouache the other side and see if there's any difference in the way it looks. That would be quite interesting actually, I might do that. Just find something fairly simple-ish and just paint it twice. <laughs> You could even do a uh, oil versus acrylics, couldn't you? You could do the same painting in oils and in acrylics and see which one you like the best. It's funny, um, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking, God, I spend, when I do a YouTube video, I automatically think to myself, I don't want to do it more than an hour and a half. I need to cut myself off if I'm going beyond an hour and, say, 15. Um, but then I think to myself, I'm kind of uh, preventing myself from doing a really good painting. So, <laughs> I've decided I'm going to cut that out for a while and just do really more challenging ones like this one and uh, if I have to speed up bits like this then uh, I don't think it matters too much as long as you're uh, getting something out of it so I'm mixing that colour there for the leg <laughs> it was just red and burnt sienna and white so quite you get, get a good flesh tone out of burnt sienna actually and white and then you can just tint it a bit warmer with a bit of like cadmium red or vermilion, whichever red you use. I always find for like a pale skin, like my own skin, uh, I tend to find like a, uh, a cadmium red and a yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt sienna. I can get really close and then white of course. I can get really close to my own skin tone and I've done uh, portraits for people as well and I've used used that but this one this clown he's got his face painted white <laughs> Yeah, so some areas my head just gets in the way, so it's been edited a bit because otherwise you're just looking at my head. <laughs> so just putting these lines in. See, just my head in the way. So I'm just trying to get that shape of the mouth. Good focus on my hair there. <laughs> See, my head just gets in the way. Just, just so you know, <laughs> I'm using uh, cadmium red uh, light and cadmium red deep. And what I was doing is using the cadmium red light for the lightest part and then uh, deep for the dark parts and then I'd put a little bit of uh, ivory black in with the deep for the darker parts yes yeah, so that, that's what I was meaning about having a camera strapped to my head then it wouldn't um, get in the way maybe I could have it as a second camera then I would have one camera looking down like this one camera looking from my my view Ooh, that's not a bad idea and then the areas where my head gets in the way I flick to the other camera <laughs> so 
So we're working it out while we're watching. So I'm just getting some ivory black into my red there for those darker areas. Works well for the uh, dark area of the nose. Also works well for the corner of the mouth I find. <laughs> Painting details like that with the uh, the little brush. It's only a cheap brush that is. I got a pack of them. I think I bought them off Wish <laughs> ages ago. So you can see I'm painting the face at a different angle to the. Uh, to what you see because it's looking at me more but it's just different so there's a little red lines there <laughs> I actually uh, didn't quite get the eyes in the right place at first so I was trying to work out a quick and easy way to get dots on the uh, trousers because if I was going to do it exact I mean it would take forever wouldn't it take absolutely forever so I thought how can I kind of cheat it a little bit just make the trousers look like trousers and then I thought I know I'll just put a load of dots on and try and get the dots in a in the right place ish and see how it looks and I thought I thought I assumed it would look all right and uh, luckily it does look all right actually I quite like it because if I was going to do exact I'd have to measure each square I'd have to get all them angles right all the creases right it would take me f forever uh, I'd be like painting this for 10 years like a painting that I saw in uh, the National Gallery of this woman wearing lace and uh, I mean it, it is amazing it is tremendous work but it took over 10 years to paint it who's got 10 years spare to do a painting <laughs> I mean it's in the National Gallery I mean it, it's a quality piece of work but geez it's funny a lot of paintings that you think oh they've only they've gone out plain air painting and finished <laughs> they actually brought back to the studio to finish they took hours to do not 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 an hour hours hours and hours I've got an oil painting on the go that I've been working on for ages. Just do a little bit now and then. In between working and stuff. Just get those little light bits in there.
just uh, filling in the white areas because um, some areas are a bit lighter than others so I pick up a bit more white and there's a bit of yellow in the mix as well a bit grey <laughs> you can see on my uh, plate in the middle it's it's not white it's off white it's very um, How do I explain this? One of the mistakes I made when I first started was using white straight out of the tube. And uh, the problem with that is most stuff is not white. Even the whitest white that you think is white, when you mix your colour and put it next to it, you'll find it's not white. <laughs> but I always just use, I mean, uh, I could list every mistake that I've made. I mean, you've got to make these mistakes, though, haven't you? I don't mind admitting that I learn by my mistakes. That's how else can you learn other than by other people's mistakes? <laughs> Be reading a book and they say, oh, don't do this. But you probably will because you'll think you know better and then uh, you do it and then uh, lo and behold it's a mistake the hands kind of reminded me of Disney hands <laughs> I've done quite a lot of Disney drawing Disney sketches I should say so my head was in the way again I just painted in the green eyes I was using uh, I think I used Viridian Green and a bit of Cad Yellow and Black for the uh, pupils. So at this point I was thinking, uh, I'm really enjoying this, <laughs> I'm really having fun here, I'm uh, enjoying this more than I thought I would, because when you create yourself a big project, sometimes you can scare yourself, but uh, I just really enjoyed this, I noticed the nose was in slightly the wrong position, so I uh, moved it. good old acrylic dries nicely and then I can just slot white on top of it and uh, or what I did is I made myself a lavender colour using the blue ultramarine blue and uh, red see how blue that is <laughs> oh, I need some more cadmium red in there to make more of a lavender colour which is uh, similar to the colour of the eye that was a bit cad red deep that was a bit of a white I probably would have been better off with alizarin and crimson to mix that but I ended up mixing it anyway doing the eyelids Painting the old eyelids. It's funny when I finish this painting <laughs> and I put the puppet away and I looked, I glanced, I was like, oh, I haven't put the puppet away yet. It's just the painting on the floor. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite funny, the illusion of something real on on the page. So I thought somewhat not right, the eyes, position of the eyes on mine just didn't they looked too close and then when I checked I was like, ah, they are. So I get some white in there and just go over the uh well 
white and the yellowy colour. Just go over it and then we can start mixing again. And luckily enough, <laughs> it made the, a really nice colour for the shadow when I did that. So I could use that in all the shadowy areas. So it's a bit of a happy accident really. There's bits of yellow in places. So it shines back a little bit, but I wanted to show you what I did. There's the eyebrows, <laughs> a little bit of black. If I bodged it up, I just got a paper towel out and wiped it and then did it again. Sometimes I got a little bit too uh, impatient and I wanted to paint, but you best off wait until you've <laughs> previous layer uh, dries these old dolls um, old puppets they uh, <laughs> kind of reminds me a bit of like Woody from Toy Story although I watched Toy Story 4 and uh, they did a gag with Woody and his head wasn't made of wood in it it was it was like he, someone stood on it and it was uh, like a plastic head and I thought well that gag do not work because he has a wooden head <laughs> So I'm just putting in a bit more of the burnt sienna into the hair. I quite loosely painted the hair actually. I could have gone into a little bit more detail if I wanted to. But I wanted to uh, be loose with it. dark on that side bit of the burnt umber just to darken it then I was looking at the uh, the shirt thinking how I could just make that a bit brighter and then improve the tie because <laughs> I did some of the red lines a bit thick and you can clean it up later on I mean, you, with these sort of paintings, you could spend forever on them, <laughs> getting it closer and closer and closer to uh, what you want. putting a bit more of the shadow colour in the areas that I could see a bit more, needed a bit more shadow. The shadows really make it though, putting the, uh, the shadows in, it really helps to make the uh, character stick up from the page. One of my biggest mistakes when I first started was I used to do the shadows too um, pale and the shadow, shadow is really dark really I'm not sure why I used to do them so pale <laughs> I just did, maybe I wasn't confident enough or something and I thought ooh I'm too scared
look at that. I <laughs> I got a bit on the page. I just wiped it. And I just did it again there. Just used a bit of grey to repaint it. So I'm just doing little tweaks here and there, put eyelashes in, improve the eyebrows, and there you go. <laughs> There's the finished painting. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video. Uh, gives you an idea of how I painted the clown anyway. So thanks very much for watching this episode, and I'll see you in another one. Cheers. Bye.